So we're going to continue working on this tutorial and we're going to focus in on the HDR pipeline, HDRP pipeline and lighting for this uh, really cool dungeon-esque level. Hey everyone, this is Al over at GameDevHQ.com. Like and subscribe to this video, share it with your friends, check out our other videos and tutorials on our site, and be sure to log in to GameDevHQ and sign up for a free account to see how you can become a greater game developer. This tutorial was inspired by the guys over at Awesome Toots. For here over at Awesome Toots, and uh, we were looking at this Goblins and Pumpkins video game, and we did it a, a re-inspiration and re-inspiring of what that level would look like using our assets from Game Dev HQ's file base. And in this tutorial, we're gonna focus in on how to do HDRP settings, such as fog and lighting, and how to get that whole environment set up, and maybe do a little bit of animation of the orcs in the level as well okay so let's start by creating in rendering a scene setting you should have a scene setting if you are using the HDR uh, HDR pipeline high definition and this will create this scene settings game object in your scene and in here um, something pretty interesting is um, you have your volume and your HD settings, and this is your visual environment. And this visual environment produces one of these three options. It produces your sky and it produces your fog. Now, you can have additional components in here, but it will only turn on if one of these are selected. So what I mean by this is if I choose HDR sky, it's not gonna work because I don't have an HDR sky component added in. So I need to add in an HDR sky and turn that on to actually have this be effective. Um, otherwise, if I don't have this HDR sky enabled, you're not gonna get any information going into here. So you wanna make sure that and you can have your HDR size set, sky set up, but you want to make sure if you want it to take effect, the component has to be added into here. So we're, we're going to go ahead and play with an HDR sky. So this procedural sky, even though it's turned on, is kind of pointless. There's, there's really no reason to have it. So we could just turn it off right now, or we could delete it. It's really your call. Now, how do you bring in an HDR sky? Well, it says it needs a cube map. Now, a great website called HDRI Haven. Just go ahead and check it out. This guy, oh, I forget his name, Greg, creates these great looking HDRs. I, I really encourage you to go down there. Um, these are free to use. He just, he has a Patreon, so if you could support him, that would be fantastic. But he has all these skies down here that you can go on to and, and click and download and import them into your scene. Now, when you import your HDR, it is a panoramic. And if you try to drop into your scene settings a panoramic image, it's not going to go. It needs to be a cube map. So how do you convert it to a cube map? Uh, real simple. In your texture type, go ahead and leave it to a default. But in your texture shape, set it to a cube. And it's going to do a six frame cube. So hit apply and it is going to create your cube map for you based on this panoramic image. Once that is done, go to your scene settings and then take your Lapa and drop it in. And now your cube map is inside the scene. So I can adjust my exposure and you can see how, you know, your exposure, let me turning, well, let me go ahead and turn off this directional light. Um, your exposure can affect your environmental scene lighting, which is, is generally what HDRs are supposed to do. So I'm gonna keep it in like this. We have this exponential fog in here already, um, which is, is pretty cool. Uh, and, and, and I would say experimental round with this, but if you try to go to linear fog, you notice how nothing works. Just what we talked about before. You actually gotta add in your linear fog and then you turn on your elements so that it becomes visible. 
and you can kind of see your, your linear fog is, is coming in at this point. Um, before we Now, we want to start adding in lights, but before we do, we need to turn this scene static. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty game object, and I'm going to call this static. And every one of the assets in here, because they don't actually move, these don't need to be uh, dynamic. They could stay static. And then they can bake in lighting detail, which in essence is a is a far more effective way of creating assets. It just it's going to be easier on your CPU when you run it in real time. So go ahead and drop everything under here underneath static, and then you just hit static and then say yes to children. All right. So then I'm going to want to go ahead and create some lights in here. Now, if I do recall, we have to use area lights because um, static lights, point lights, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they don't give baked data um, out. So I'm going to use the area lights in here, but you can change the shape of your area light. So we can use this as a point. And this will emit an even lighting um, throughout. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm, I'm completely off my kilter here. But um, that was a pretty neat thing for me to find right there. Now, I'm going to take this light source over to this wall. And I want to basically get it to where this light is coming from this particular light bulb. Now for these lights, inside of each one of these lights, I have this gas lamp right here. And if it's normally set to casting shadows is on. And if you have that, it's gonna do this. And it's not a real attractive look right there. So just make sure that your shadows are set to off. And then let's just go ahead and start duplicating these and setting these where these lights are supposed to go. Take these, drop these inside. And then I'm gonna mess around with some of the emission data on my lights themselves because these don't look very, oh, dungeon-ish, okay? So let's go ahead and jump over the color temperature. We, we want color temperature. Now, um, far left-hand side means the warmer the color is. Uh, far right-hand side, cooler the color is. So practical examples. Think of an old light post, an old light bulb with the filament that is an old warm yellowish color. That's on this side of the spectrum right here. If you have fluorescent light bulbs, you're in a lab environment, this is a cooler bluer color, and it's actually on this side. I think it's at 8,500 Kelvin is, is what most white fluorescents sit at. And usually these warmer ones are in the 2,000 to 2,500 Kelvin area, but it may be a little too warm for our particular purposes. So we're going to go ahead and drop that down a little bit. Um, another thing we should probably add is our goblins. So reached out to Fahir, and you know, being the awesome dude that he is, he sent this over, and we got these golems in here, and um, here's what they kind of look like right down here on the bottom right. Uh, they don't have like a normal channel or anything, but you know, just drop these in the scene. I originally had zombies, but... Let's keep it in uh, uh, good spirits to Fahir and what he's building. And uh, I'm just going to drop this here. And we're just going to duplicate a bunch of these. Adjust my linear fog a little bit more. So it's a little more intense. And then um, if I do a constant color, I can actually adjust what the color will be. So inside a color, I can go select, you know, let's say this warmer look, and then, you know, adjust the density 
to be appropriate. And there we go. That looks pretty cool. Get these nice reflections on the roof. And another thing that would probably be pretty important is to go ahead and add in a, um, what you'll call it, uh, lighting, a light, not a reflection, a reflection probe. Um, so we're going to just go ahead and adjust uh, this probe setting. So I'm going to click this button right here so I can adjust the actual size. Let's go ahead and adjust this up here. Adjust this so that it goes all the way out there and out here. So it will bake in our reflection into this room. So it will bake reflections not from the sky, but inside the room onto itself, uh, which should create something really cool looking. Each one of these golems, I want to see, ah, it doesn't have an animation attached to it. So we're going to go ahead and have to attach an animation to it. Now I have one in here, uh, but if you don't have one pre-built, all you have to do is go into the animation areas and just drop that in, and it will create a golem animator. Now, um, a couple things uh, about animations. Uh, that will help you and and I'm just actually going to delete this animator so you could see the issue that would occur is so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab an idle and I'm gonna click on my golem and drop it into this golem right here right so golem 4 and it will create this um, animator Okay, so they're all using the golem animation, right? Um, when it gets to the end here, because here's the animation for the golem, it's just going to stop. Uh, in fact, if I hit play, we should be able to see it move slightly in idle, and then it's going to freeze. So he's moving, and then he stops. The reason is, is that the animation isn't set to loop. And in most imported FBX animations, they're not going to be set to loop and they're going to be set to read only. So if I click on idle, you see how this is grayed out? The only way to really pre uh, uh, prevent this is actually just by duplicating the animation. And that creates this animation over here, which now has a loop time capability. So then I can create this particular animation, which is idle, and I'm going to drop this new idle into here. And this new idle is going to make this thing loop. Now, each one of these golems should idle and continue as animation. So it'll play, and then I'll just keep rotating over and over and over again. Um, and I'll adjust the camera in this next shot so that we're, we're looking in the, the correct direction. So I'm just going to hit this main camera, which you can see that's where its location is. And by hitting Command Shift F, I'm going to move my camera to this position, which is now the game position. But one of the problems also you're going to encounter is when you hit play, um, the golems are all going to be animating at the same time, which kind of looks a little ridiculous. We want to offset their animations so that they don't do this constant moving together thing. So we need to create a script for it. And it's a real simple script. And I'll show you how to set it up first. First thing we're going to do is we want to create a parameter in here that's a float. And we want to call this offset. And inside our idle, we have these parameters in here that we can use. So if these are the parameters you create, this is where you can implement the parameters. So one of the things that is available is this thing called cycle offset. So if we turn this on, it's going to look for any available parameter. So right now we're just going to use the offset parameter. 
And then we can go into our golem object, which contains the animator. And in here, I created a script and it's a real simple script. It's, it reaches for the animator that the script is attached for and it grabs the component and does a random range when it starts between zero and one. And then it's called at the beginning. So between zero and one, this golem is going to play at, you know, point two. This is going to start at point eight. This is going to start at point seven. And so all the animations will be offset when they begin. So it looks like all the animations uh, were unique. So if we just grab all these and drop an animation script on all of them and just go ahead and hit save, this will now make it so that each of these golems are animated um, uh, separately or the the animations don't start at the same time all the animations are offset so now if you look at these you could tell that they're a little they're just slightly different well this is al over at gamedevhq.com and we are out of here thank you for sticking around and checking this out and we got one more episode after this that will finish out this tutorial thank you for here for setting this uh, whole uh, concept up together and uh, we will check you guys out later uh, we'll talk to you soon bye